It's really important that we get that Buddha realization because that is the realization that produced hundreds of ashrams. We were just talking about this. Hundreds of ashrams at the time up and down the length of India healing hundreds of thousands of people in the early days of Buddha. It was only the later disciples of Buddha that misunderstood what he meant by the word maya, the illusory sense, that ruined that evidence of this world and this body and this mind being utterly perfect, utterly complete. In other words, it ruined the ability to do what this world calls healing. And that's the same today. So it's really very important. But in other words, they understood maya, or misunderstood his word maya, illusion, to mean that this world is illusion. This world is an illusory state and a deprived state of both good and bad. That is not the case. And if we don't understand that, we're stuck right here. The first thing we've got to start doing as we walk around now and for eternity, every minute is to realize that what I'm walking around in, doesn't matter what it looks like, it can look like hell or heaven, what I am walking around in is heaven. But I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Because of the perception of the human sense. All error is within. There is no error out there. Exactly. Exactly. Paul called it, we see through glass darkly. It's literally as if we put glasses on and painted lack, limitation, disease, illness, loneliness, injustice, cruelty, poverty. It's literally like that. We walk around with dark glasses on with a dim perception, a dark perception of what really is. But you see, the moment that clicks with us, it changes our entire realisation, because now actually, there's nothing to do. We, we don't have to change anything. Well, let's give you another example. Let's say that we painted on this glass behind me a garden, the same garden, but completely devoid of flowers and trees and grass. It was just mud. So it was okay, you know, but it was just mud. But actually what's there are beautiful flowers and beautiful grass and beautiful hedge, beautiful colour, beautiful aroma, beautiful activity, right? Now, do we have to do anything to bring about a garden of rich colour and rich aroma, rich substance and form and beauty. We don't do we all we have to do is clean the window and there is revealed the fullness that is there. And that's the difference and it's a major difference. It's the difference that'll make you, any of us, into what the rest of the world calls a miracle worker half the time. You, whenever we are around, things happen. Just beautiful things happen. Miracles sometimes happen. A lot of the time they're not recognised as miracles, thankfully. They seem natural. But when we're around, suddenly business picks up. Suddenly health is better. Oh, do you know, I haven't even thought about this pain I've had for ten years. And then when we're not there, the pain is back. Isn't that strange? Or well, business starts getting worse again. Isn't that strange? How did it suddenly lift when we're around and then drop again? And so on and so on. Or well, the neighbour, <laughs> there's a lovely story, everyone remembers that from Ashford, right? The neighbour problem with Marcus. And you can share it with people out there again if you want to. But you should ask him, it was a really beautiful story. But there it is. Now, did did anything happen? Did we go and give that neighbour an operation or a lobotomy or inject him with some niceness? No. 
that suddenly was revealed a greater degree of the truth of what before had appeared as a very troubling neighbour, right? And this is it. So, this realisation suddenly enables any of us to be what the world calls a healer. Anyone can heal. You are a healer. And let me say it again. <laughs> I, I really despise that word, healing. There's nothing to heal, you see. We are revealers. We are the revelation. We are, we are revealers of the beautiful garden. And all that's happened is that grace, spirit, happening within our silence, has the effect of cleaning that window. It washes consciousness. It washes away the, the dark human perspective. And suddenly we can see. That's all that's happening here. And what do we see? Oh, we see a healthy body. We see the beautiful garden. We see the prosperous business. There's no business on the planet that isn't full prosperity of business. It's impossible. There can't be an activity if that activity isn't the fullness of the activity, because there isn't another type of activity. There's only one. There's one activity, one life, one sight. If you think your sight isn't so good, think again. You are the infinity of perfect sight. You are God looking through. Doris Crawford used to say, God is looking through your eyes. With her permission, we can go even further and say, well, God is your eyes and God is looking at itself only. So do you think God hasn't got good vision? think when God looks at itself, it's a bit blurry? No. Do you think when God reads its novel, it can't see the words very well? Of course not. Do you think when God is aware of its body, it's not in the full awareness of life only, the divine life? Of course that's the only life that is known, it's the only life that exists. Do you think when God is aware of its activity or its abundance, it sees a shortage or lack or slowness? Of course not. The presence, the awareness is only ever aware of itself, which is the fullness of the wholeness of itself. God's awareness is infinite. Which means, firstly, not limited, and secondly, the embodiment of everything. Right here I might be aware of this seeming spot, but the awareness that's actually happening is aware of the fullness of itself right here. So what problem have I got? Where's my problem? Ah, I'm believing collective consciousness. I'm believing the perception. I'm believing the painted window. Well, I have to live with it until I can learn not to. That's all. Okay, so let's dissolve this perception, shall we? Or are there any questions? First, because we have to at least have a little bit of a... Uh -huh. Okay, there's nothing wrong with this world, this body, this mind, this business, this community, this earth. The economy. There's nothing wrong with the economy. Do you think the economy of God goes up and down? Or as in many Indian teachings, do you think God's playing games? Do you think God's having some fun by throwing us into deprivation? Let's see how they handle that one. Huh. Throw a bad economy down there, that'll be fun. Of course not. If I, if I look at something really beautiful, like a beautiful flower in the garden or something, um, is that not real then? Everything is real, but what you are seeing and I am seeing is a, is a perception of what's actually there. And so you are seeing and I'm seeing a fraction, a tiny grain of what's actually infinite beauty, infinite colour, aroma, joy. So, there's nothing wrong with seeing the beautiful garden, but if we stop there, if we accept that, we're kidding ourselves, and we're holding ourselves in a sense of materiality. But if, on the other hand, we look at the beautiful garden and say, well, wait a minute, it is beautiful, in this sense of perception, it is beautiful. 
But actually, the whole infinity of heaven is here as this garden. And then let me begin to receive that. Let me begin to, as, as the prophet says, open his eyes that he may see. Don't be satisfied. Open my eyes that I may see. And then you begin to see more of that infinity. Whether it be flowers or money or life, health, love. Less uh, natural disaster in the world. And this is very literal, through your individual awareness and mine, we can see crime going down in our community. And we do, when, and only when, we know there isn't any, and that the crime is existing here as collective consciousness, and so now we can relax and realise the only job is for me to get rid of this mind that is collective consciousness happening as me. Not mine, it's collective consciousness finding a home here, because I'm accepting it. Oof. Did you hear that? It's only our experience if we accept the appearance. It's collective consciousness experience. It's not ours. There's no me. How can it be mine, therefore? It's collective consciousness. It's the movie running through... The only time and place it stops and becomes our tangible experience is when we accept it. Now that is very important. What do we accept as real in our lives? There we go, we've caught it, we've cemented it in here, and now we have to live it. Whether it be illness, disease, poverty, aggravation out there somewhere natural disaster out there somewhere? Well, when you're on the road and you see accident box. Well, what do you... See, it doesn't matter about what the appearance is. What no, do no, you or no, I know? Yeah. Exactly. As soon as they do that, as soon as they label it as an accident box, but say, so many people killed here in the last two years, that's got into collective consciousness. And what, what is the only possible result? More of this. Exactly. And then they say it was an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> we need to realise that we never have to accept collective consciousness because it's not ours it's literally a movie playing here now do we know the truth of being or do we not if we don't then we're stuck with it and we say what a terrible world and there you go I told you it was going to happen because it's an accident black spot I'm not surprised I've crashed into another car but when we know the truth, instantaneously we can free ourselves in truth, in spirit. We don't free ourselves from an accident black spot or from collective consciousness or from disease or any of it. We free ourselves in spirit. We are free in spirit. The moment we realize, ah, I actually am the spiritual being. And as Buddha realized, all this world, both good and bad, is simply perception. It's the movie running through me. But I never have to accept it. But it is I that has to decide not to accept it. And this is what I was saying earlier. We do have a little bit of mind usage we need in order to get rid of mind. We need, the mind needs to recognize what a fool it is and then what it really is. The mind isn't really a fool. The mind has just been duped into thinking that it's a fool. But actually it's not. It's the divine. And the moment we realise that and lift above the movie, we find our freedom in the degree that we can lift above it. But do you see the point that actually, if we can just grasp the grain of the truth, that there is nothing to change out here. There's nothing to change in that garden. It's already beautiful. If it looks barren in any way or depraved or ill diseased in just in any way recognize straight away that's the movie and that all we have to do is free ourselves of the movie and let grace let spirit happening as us now the truth of us now be free to be evident wash the windows and suddenly ah oh. really that's all we ever have to do 
That's the end of the story if we could only really believe that and know it. That's the end of the story. But there'll probably be more story coming out because we can't believe that. But there it is. So any questions about this? Let's root out anything that you might be thinking. Yeah, but. But. Or maybe there isn't. Because we've got to leave here lifted, changed, brighter, more aware. Right? Otherwise we're wasting our time. So come on, any questions? Yes, thank you for starting the flow. Yeah. So when I'm looking at a failing business, yes. I'm looking at a failing business that has failed and is Things going up and things coming down. Yes. So it's just the, the collective psyche of that change. It's okay. simply that. And it's not a reality. Again, it's the glass darkly. Um, and I'm judging it and I'm reacting to it and fearing it because yes. I've got, oh, well, that might mean da 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 da. What would that mean to da da? So I'm running ahead then with thinking. Yes. Rather than actually just stopping and just seeing it as a misperception. Yes. And that that is not a reality that's there, it's just a concept. It's purely a purely a concept. It's not even your concept. No, it's not. No. It's the collective consciousness concept. And the mind, of course, can very easily point to the fact that that is reality. It's reality your business is failing. Because look at all these businesses that are failing. Yeah. And it's not even their fault because the economy has gone down the toilet. <laughs> and that's the reason. Do you really think there's less spirit here now as a so-called depressed economy than there was whenever it was where there was a better economy? Do you really think that spirit's depleted? There's a, there's a wave of spirit and everything's all great and dandy. We can all get mortgages that we can't afford. Right? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then there comes the follow-up because there's always a bad following the good, right? And now we're all re really falling down the pan because now we really can't afford it anymore and we're all collapsing. There's no customers because they're collapsing. There's not enough money. Everyone's being pulled into the banks and being made bankrupt. Do you really think that's the case? Do you really think there's less spirit now than there was? Do you really think there's less spirit than the whole of spirit as your business? And yet the business next door that's prospering, you think there's more spirit there? Only by collective consciousness. Absolutely, and, and you're, you're absolutely right. Of course there's no less spirit. There's, it's never happened. It's you know what's happened. the worst thing about all this as well, is that that business that's doing really well hasn't read one single truth book, <laughs> and they've never, read, they've, never, they've never come to one single meeting. That's what really gets me. <laughs> so it's buying into the story then, really. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. And not questioning it. Remember, and not, and not question. No, 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 no. Well, just knowing it's not the truth. Listen, if I come in here with a bright green face after lunch, you're not going to believe that. You're going to say Paul's playing tricks. He's painted his face bright green. It's just like that. What do we believe? Well, if I dress up as a, you know, as a as a as a, as a woman, or you dress up as a man, you know, are we going to believe that? No, you're going to think Paul's being a real fool. He's, you know. He's even forgot to shave his legs. He's not making a very good woman. You know, it's literally that. I like to ridicule it because it's literally that ridiculous. We're literally buying into the movie. It's as if we've gone to the cinema and we've got this terrible life in whatever way it is with money or, or business or relationship or love or community in some way, disease some way, and we and we become transfixed and we take it on and we believe it. Oh, my life. Can you imagine going to see a movie and then as we come out, our best friend says, well, how are you? You're looking a bit depressed. Oh, my life, my business is collapsing, my body's riddled with disease. It's a movie. Oh, I was going to say, this is my girlfriend, she's a nightmare. She's always like, oh, I'm so Two and a half years she's been trying to get a job. Yes. But because she doesn't think she's good enough, she's yes. not going to get a job. And she hasn't. And she's still she won't, she never will. No, I know. And she's still very much in that rut. Remember, what we hold in mind 
is held in experience. That we have in mind. Say again. That what you focus on, you'll get more of. Indeed, whatever you hold in mind is held in your experience. You cannot escape it. Whatever's happening as consciousness, minute by minute by minute, is experience. What we call the tangible experience, because. Consciousness is experience because consciousness is all. There is nothing but consciousness. We've made the mistake of saying, well, there is. There's consciousness and biscuits. No, there isn't. That is consciousness. And actually, if you know that that is consciousness, then they taste even better than they do right now. And they can't harm you. And they can't harm you. No, of course not. No, they can't. But you've got it. But you do need. Let's not kid ourselves. You do need a very, very high and pure awareness for them not to harm you. So be careful. It's very difficult when you get when you are emotionally involved with something. It's very difficult to do that detachment. Hugely difficult. Nevertheless, we are talking of principle, of law. And it might be difficult to add 2 plus 2 when we don't know that it's 4. But that's not going to let us off the hook. The, the principle of mathematics isn't going to be kind to us and say, well, you know, Paul's helped a lot of old men and ladies over the street in his time and, you know, he's generally happy with people and he's a well-intentioned being. So I'll tell you what, just for him, we'll bend the law of mathematics and we'll allow... 2 plus 2 equals 3, or 2 plus 2 equals 5, for him, because he's such a good guy. Not going to happen. Or we'll allow his plane to take off, even though he doesn't really quite understand the principle of flight yet, because, you know, he really just wants to help the holiday makers get to Spain. He's not in it for the money, he's in it for holiday, holiday makers having a great time in Spain. Not going to work. So, yes, it's difficult, but that's not going to help. And we, we have to know that we are principal. And actually, rather than being cruel, it's beautiful, because as soon as we tap into the principle, the fullness of that principle is right here as our experience. At the moment we know that 2 plus 2 is 4, then 4 exists for us forever and right now, and no matter where we are. We could be right in the middle of the biggest maths problem on the planet, complete and utter diseased maths problem or ill, or depraved, or, or lacking maths problem. Couldn't we? We could be surrounded by it. Our whole world of maths has fallen to pieces. And yet, the very second we tap into the fact that 2 plus 2 is 4, bang, we've got 4. Instantaneously. We've got it on the moon, in the bottom of the ocean, on cloud 9, or on cloud 1, or at Audrey's house. It doesn't make any difference where we are or what our circumstances is. Instantaneously, we have the fruitage of the principle. So it's a beautiful thing. The principle is, you are the infinity of life itself, of God itself, spirit itself. The whole of spirit itself is embodied in and as this very consciousness. Because God, spirit, is consciousness. There is nothing but consciousness. Everything everywhere is consciousness. In the same way we could say everything in the cinema actually is only light. There aren't really people on the screen and there aren't really pounds and dollars and activities and ill and not so, um, I was going to say ill and healthy or diseased or healthy people, skinny people, fat people. There's no such thing. There's only actually light on the screen, right? But there are images of people and amounts and activities and so on on the screen. But actually, is the image real? Can we go up there and start talking with that image? Can we take him or her home with us? Sometimes I've wanted to take the heroine home with me. It's very beautiful. But wouldn't it be funny if I tried? Wouldn't the cinema laugh at me? Because I'm in a confused state. I'm going up and I'm chatting her up. 
and I'm trying to take her home with me? It's just impossible, of course, because it's an image. Now, the only difference with the two-dimensional imagery we experience on the screen and this three-dimensional imagery is that extra degree. It's still imagery. It's just that this is three-dimensional imagery and we've grown up in it, so we believe it. We really believe it. That's my leg. It isn't. It's consciousness. We really believe that that's a delicious chocolate biscuit. It is not. It's consciousness. We are consciousness. Everything is consciousness. And everything experienced in and as your consciousness, your universe, your world, body, business, bank account, relationship, community, is yours. There is no power out there that can affect you. Not one grain of power. It seems as if there is. Why? Because we've frozen the film and taken ownership of it. This whole weekend, if we want to name it, is going to be named the impersonal self. And when we rise, even by a grain, but a true grain, into that truth of ourselves, which is the impersonal self, not the personal self, we instantaneously free ourselves of everything that's demanding of us in this world and overwhelming and seeming to be a power against us, something that we can't do anything about. We're under the, we're under the grips of this power of no money or, or disease or something or tsunamis, whatever it is. As instantaneously as we are free in 2 plus 2 is 4 because it is principle. There's no power out there. It is a movie and we can be free in the truth instead of being stuck in the movie at any moment. And now is this moment, I hope. I hope we don't ever have to see each other again, apart from socially, because, and that would be lovely, really lovely, but we don't really want to, and we don't need to ever come back and try and learn more about the self, because we are that self, and we just have to rise into it by a degree of real rising, and we're there. The rest you find unfolds like the dawn every morning. There's no learning to do. There's just the receiving of awareness that takes place. Oh, that's beautiful. Any other questions? Are you saying that you could lose your business but not suffer? Or are you saying you wouldn't lose your business? Now, I'm going to give you two answers to that. Mm. Uh, um, and you'll only understand the second answer to that as you, as you can lose, again, the personal sense and rise into the truth a little bit. But the first answer is it's absolutely impossible to lose your business. Because there is no failure in God. If there is an activity, it is the activity that is God activity. Simple as that. Do you, do you understand? That can't, in the same way that there can't be a grain of life, if the wholeness of life were not there, there can't be the grain of anything. There can't be the grain of activity, whether we call it business or running down the street or running in a, you know, playing a football match, movement of a leaf. If you see any activity anywhere in this whole universe of yours, any act, you could see the tiniest movement of a leaf in the breeze. That's activity, isn't it? Well, then the whole of activity is right there. And that means any activity is the same activity. If you're in the activity of business, the whole of activity is there, as that, what we call business. And, and again, do you think that the, the cake of spirit is divided into you know, some apple, some pear, some orange, some, some um, cherry, some grape. Is it? You know, in other words, could, there be, uh, could I not be in the right? I, I used to think that, well, maybe I'm in the wrong business. And so I have to lose this one before you know, then my right one will appear. Of course not. The full activity is the whole activity. And all we have to do is realise that and suddenly this very activity right here becomes prosperous. So if we were applying that to the death of someone, like the 
truth is that you wouldn't have their physical feeling like that would be an experience. So well, we could say no, I'm in a physical Well, Jesus experience. proved that that's not necessarily true. You do not have to lose this sense of physicality um, as death. Well, I, we, I'm sure we will, but that's only because we don't want to anymore. We don't need, no, none of us can die before we're ready, let me put it like that. If you see an accident out there and someone's died, they wanted to, they were ready. Subcon- they wouldn't say that consciously, but subconsciously it's impossible that they haven't wanted to move on. They've wanted to escape or they've just... They, or, or something deep down is ready for a different experience and it's because they don't consciously live a higher degree of their fullness that it seems to happen as an accident or as, as a disease but not one of us go anywhere before we're ready what power is there that could have an influence on us like that there is no power other than this power But it's de- buried deep within, and so we don't we don't see it like that. We, we say, oh, he's died in an accident. He's died of this disease. Of course, every day we see thousands of people doing such things. But if only we could see what happens the moment this sense of body drops. They're right there in their new sense of body, and as happy as can be. Until... You see, they're still at the same level of consciousness, and so they're going to have to live the experience again until they rise. Anyway, we're going into areas that no, are different. That's a good like question. It's a lovely question. Not suffering, but it still happens. Yeah, you see, yeah. none of us have no, to... No, we, really. we are free of all suffering the moment we discover our freedom of spirit. If we're trying to get free from, we're going to continue to fail. You cannot be free from disease or, or lack or limitation or unhappiness or loneliness. Because if you think still that there's something to be free from, you're still believing it. And therefore it's still in mind, and when it's in mind, it's in experience. Whatever is in mind is the manifest experience, because mind and manifestation are one. But you can see then, because of that, so let's let's say it like this, the only activity that is holding the, the manifestation of Poverty or illness um, or any 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 um, discordant or negative human experience is this right here, and therefore the moment it's not happening here, it's not happening. It, it, it can't be there. It cannot be there any more than the image of the of the two stars, the, her- the hero and the heroine up there, can be there when we take the film away. It's gone. They can't stay there without the film. And if only we would... Sorry? It's the letting go again. It's the letting go. And and literally the emptying of this world from this consciousness. It's exactly the same as saying, I'm going to take that movie out of that cinema, or away from that projector. It's very simple. The movie doesn't exist in that cinema, from the moment we take the film away. From the moment you take the idea of lack away, it cannot remain. And you will see this within days, I promise you, because I've had that experience. Within days, abundance is there. And the only reason it's days is because you're hanging on a little bit, as I was. It took me eight days to finally realise it. Eight or nine, I keep forgetting. Eight or nine days. At all. Overnight we can be free of our disease. Or we can experience the love of our life walking into our lives. Or experience that troublesome neighbour suddenly becoming a bit of an angel. Is he still an angel? My best mate, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? When was this? This was back this was at the beginning of the year? Yeah. It was this year, wasn't it? The January retreat, it was just about then. So it's only, it's only 
It's a few. It's 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 eight, seven, eight months ago. Isn't that beautiful? So from the most terrible neighbour to to best mates, or, or pretty close. Well, that's a bit of a yeah, I understand. <laughs> but he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And that was, and the reason I remember this so well is that it happened on the phone. We were on the phone. We were in meditation. There was a knock on the door. You assumed the worst. You went, Paul, can I put you right down and see? Because you heard his voice speaking to, to your wife. He shot down there <laughs> like a guard dog. And he came back up five minutes later and he said, You would not believe what's happened. Really? I believe. All harmony, because that's all that's possible. It was very beautiful, though. Do the same in my business now. <laughs> but your business is already done, but you don't know it. Your business is already done, but you don't know it. Your business is. I don't know. I don't need to. You can talk to me here or privately about your your, your stuff with pleasure. But actually, and it, and I, I think it often helps because you unload, you know. So you're very welcome. But actually, we don't need to know. Actually, the very talking of it is holding it in place for as long as we talk about it. But you're fine, you can, because it, it just dissolve. But do you catch this point now? Only as we are happening as consciousness, being this idea of lack, really believing that there isn't enough money, or really believing that there's something wrong with the body, whatever we're stuck with is it being held in place that is the very activity that is looking like my terrible situation the moment it isn't there it isn't there either because here and there is the same place here and there is actually only consciousness there is nothing but consciousness it is this consciousness that you are being conscious with this is your universe here. All of this is embodied right here. And so it only matters what flavour we're letting through. What, what is our awareness? That's all that matters. What is our awareness? The moment our awareness is, that is trying to fool me. I do not believe it any longer. I am going to only be the activity of truth. And then after I'm being the activity of truth, which is still using the mind, is what we're doing here. We're talking truth. And all of you will feel a measure of greater peace now than you did when you walked in this morning. Isn't that true of all of you? Isn't it? And yet, now if I... You see, now that we've said that, your minds will go back there at home and you'll, and you'll feel yourself go, oh yeah, but... You're literally like a hot air balloon... But you see, as we fill our minds with truth, then without thinking of anything, you are rising, and you'll feel the peace. Now this will happen until on Sunday, you f you, 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 you're way up there, you're feeling very, very peaceful. You know the truth, you can't be shaken, and then you've just got to maintain it. But it'll be, it'll be very strong after we go through the weekend. Because... We mustn't allow it to be anything less than strong. And it, it, it is, it will be, don't worry. That's not your activity, that's just you being open. And then it will be there. It is there already. Any other questions about this? So the wars that are going on are being held in place of the, by the active conscious and all the, all the charities by the public Unfortunately, charities hold the problem in place. It's, it's a self-perpetuating business, really. They, they, they're doing it with great intention, um, mostly, <laughs> perhaps. We see Joe just said, didn't you, about... They're pure, let's just get this one. The, the, the pure intention of charity is a wonderful element of collective consciousness, isn't it? Unfortunately, behind the scenes in many charities, it's pretty ruthless. Right, Linda? Correct. It's very sad. Again, you see, collective consciousness is 
the embodiment of both good and bad. So you can't have just good. You know, there's not a human being who ever lived that has only good. Because the very fact that we're a human being embodies good and bad. And so we, we are both good and bad, and we experience both good and bad. We can't avoid it. The only thing we can do is be free in our truth, in spirit. But yes, the, the, unfortunately the charities and the, and the collections are only serving to hold it in place, the whole of Materia Medica. And again, let me say the same thing, at the collective consciousness level, who on earth is going to criticise most of the good intention of Materia Medica and the pharmaceutical industry? But even at its best intention, it is unfortunately holding it all in place and will be the witness of just more and more and more and more, as we see. As all of this great knowledge of medicine reduced the amount of disease in the world, or the percentage of disease in the world, at all, no, we see more disease now than we ever have. Has all the clever marketing reduced the amount of great difficulty and poverty and bankruptcy in business? No, it's increased it. And so on and so on and so on. So, the human condition cannot solve the human condition. The only thing we can do, and that's because it's false. The cinema characters can't solve their problem on their own. Can you imagine? Can you imagine them stepping out of the movie and trying to do their own thing and say, hey, I've got a good idea. They are, they are run by the movie, of course. We are run by collective consciousness. We can't escape our problems. And it just so happens that collective consciousness has found a resting place in you and me, individually. Why? Because you and me have latched onto an element of its difficulties. That's all. And don't you find that the same problems are here all our life? They keep plugging us the same thing. Always money, or it's always health, or it's always relationships. Why don't people get me? Why don't they understand me? She always misunderstands me. Right? Well, he always does. Right? This is, we always have the same problems. Of course, we've got to rise out of them. We can't fix them. We've got to rise out of them. So here they are, we've, for some reason or other, we've latched onto the money thing or the health thing or the relationship thing or we're terribly concerned with Mother Earth. We had so many beautiful people in Santa Cruz that were deeply concerned about Mother Earth. And of course that concern, and they didn't like to hear it to begin with, but they were very receptive, very beautiful, really, what a beautiful bunch of people. On day three they were completely receptive and it was such a beautiful, it was a miracle day, day three it was extraordinary but you see the very concern about Mother Earth and then trying to do something to stop global warming and stop this and stop the cruelty stop the cutting down of the forests holds it in place makes it worse more questions yes in the presence of what's called a practitioner uh, we can experience temporary healings, and we do. Uh, and, and again, I hate all this, this idea of practitioner. It, it's simply that if there is a higher state of illumined consciousness, then as we walk into that higher state of illumined consciousness, we are endowed with it or as it. In exactly the same way as if we held a candle, if this was all dark and we held a candle and that was us, and then a, a floodlight walks in, then we're absorbed in that light. We have the experience of much greater light. But, and that can be the experience of a healed body, healed finances, whatever it is, but that'll be temporary because as that consciousness wanes in your awareness, then up comes the problem again, and that's always the experience. So ultimately, it can only be achieved individually, yeah. And even the effect of uh, illumined consciousness helping you wanes as well. It becomes ineffective, actually. It's very interesting. We can't keep resting in someone else's consciousness. And we don't need to. We don't want to. There's no need for it. You are that consciousness, actually. It's just that you've got the lid on it. So, like, doing work, I used to, when I was in the States, we used to do work for the world. Yeah. 
course it does if you're not working for the world. So the words that Joel used have got to be interpreted really carefully. I like to think of it as work for the kingdom. So that we, we're working in the kingdom. And we can do some of this on Sunday if you want to. But uh, again, we had a beautiful session where we, we went through the entire process of working in our kingdom. But now we're not thinking that we're working to fix the world. There is no world to be fixed. But we're working in and as the owner of our kingdom. In other words, we're working as pure I. We're not trying to fix anything. We're revealing the truth of the kingdom. And that's very different. But that's what Joel meant by world work. So yes, in that respect, it's, oh, it's our work. It's actually the only reason we're all here. There's no other reason. There's no personal reason. Do you, think, do you think there's a personal reason? We're here to be a successful business person? Or to be a great dad or mum? Or to be an athlete or a banker? Do you think that's why we're here? Of course not. We're completely and utterly stuck in the dream, if that's what we think. We are here for one reason only, and that is to be the light of the world. And until we are... We're being that light of the world. We're the impersonal self. Now, we can still have our businesses. We can still have our families. But our whole sense of awareness of business and of family is entirely different. And we are being that light as this business to all our customers, to all our suppliers and so on, or to our family and beyond. See, it doesn't stop. There's no walls anymore. It doesn't stop. We wouldn't be in business. We wouldn't give time to our customer, not to that so-and-so, because he's not my customer. We wouldn't do that. We'd just be this to everybody. We wouldn't stop at financing our family or being or taking our family on picnics or taking... You know, we'd, we'd want to do that for our neighbours and, and the children's home down the road and so on and so on. We'd become the impersonal self. Can you imagine the sunshine being all confused and thinking, well, I'm only going to shine in that garden down there because that's mine. It's ridiculous, isn't it? The sunshine shines globally. We shine globally. And only until we do, or only when we do, are we becoming the true self that we are. But our fulfilment is indescribable. Every element of our life is now indescribable fulfilment. We're not giving up anything. We're giving way to what was limited and now experiencing the fullness. perpetuating yep. so my question is then in the face of the letters and the nastiness and what's happening how do I maintain the courage to say Phew, you nearly fooled me there I know what you are I'm, you know, I'm not going to give you I'm not going to run with this image I'm going to clean the windows so I'm, how, how do I maintain that because I get a letter with my bank saying on and it, the, the frenzy of that, or the, the, the power just seems to it goes, and it can be two or three hours later, and I'm like, shit, all right, okay, the only presence here is spirit, and so we will, I've got to get it. We, we will go through it really, really tangibly, practically. We'll make this very, very practical, okay? We'll do it with everything. We'll do it with all the problems. Well, if you want to, you can write. I don't know how openly you want to discuss everything. Um, we, we can do that, or we can, or you could, if you want to, you could write it down. Why are you here? What's the one major thing you'd like to change in your life? Write it down. Don't put your name on it, so I don't know who it is. You can do it like that if you want to. And what I'd like to do is is make every one of our seemingly personal problems so practical, you know, so we're not missing anything. So if you want to do that, we'll do it. Now, I know you've got to go today, right? You should just cancel tomorrow and sign. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What's more important than this? I've got a family thing to go to. Well, cancel it. Mm. I'll get them all to come in instead. You could do that. That'll, that'll, that'll separate them from the... You <laughs> never want you again. So we'll try and make it as practical as possible today. But you see, we need to understand more before we can make it practical. But we will. We'll try it for you. And you can have the uh, recordings, of course, so you won't miss anything, actually. 
But if there is something specific, you and me are going to speak later on, right? Okay. So you can tell me then, and then we can, uh, so I can tell you privately, specifically what to do. I don't think listening to this in seven years is so nice to have time to think and listen. Yeah. And the problem I did have is now resolved. Oh, well, there you go. Well, you might as well go now. (laughs) Go to your family, do now. Yeah, there's the little things that I've got. I'm super blown when I was a boy, so I just need to get a grip of myself and think, just get off. Well, well, don't get a grip of yourself. Lowercase s. Get a grip of yourself. Let yourself take over what you think you are. Because you're not whoever you think you are. And when you tell your family that, in fact, you better I'm check. I'm not going to tell my family anything because they'll just know. <laughs> well, the thing is, they've invited the wrong person because you're not that person. <laughs> It's actually not at all down to you. It's not down to you. It's been down to you all your life. And look where it's got you. (laughs) Right? Yeah. It's not down to you. It's down to you. And in fact, the you that it's down to is already in divine perfection bliss euphoria life love abundance activity purpose so much fulfilment that if you even grasped or caught sight of one grain of that true fulfilment you'd literally explode all over this room and then we'd have a big clean up job to do <laughs> Any other questions? Is it the belief that we have it's my business? Um, mm. I mean, what about the father's business? So it's getting the me out of the way and just yes. the business be, in other words. It's a, yes, it's about recognising that anything at all, however we label it, is actually the infinity of the whole happening as what we label as a biscuit or a business or a TV. It's really... If you can imagine, um, I think we brought up the idea of a prism before. If you can imagine a prism, it sounded like prison when I listened back to it, but, <laughs> which, which is it's actually true. It's the, it's the prison of the prism. But if you can imagine one light coming to the prism, and yet when we look on the other side of that prism, or on all the other faces of the prism, there are infinite numbers of, of multicoloured separate lights now. But again, like the cinema, there's only one light. All of this is, a, is actually just one light. But we, this prism is the, the collective consciousness mind and it appears, the one appears as many. And not only many, but different. So I've got red over here and purple and green and blue. I've got a book, a biscuit, a business, a TV, an Aiden, a leg... All is just the one, but being perceived as all of this universe and everything in and of it. But it's just perception. What's the truth of all these coloured lights? If we believe the coloured lights, we're we're not understanding the truth, are we? There's actually only one light hitting that prism. Just one laser hitting that prism. And yet, a a, a variety of lights and colours. You see? It's all it is. There's not one truth about anything in this universe that we can name. As Lao Tzu said, if you can name it, it is not it. So let's add the whole thing, as we've always said. If you can see, hear, taste, touch, smell, or think it, it isn't it. So don't try and make any sense of it. Do not believe it. Do not try and fix it. You're wasting your time. You're in... Noddy's land. You're, you're, you're up there on the screen believing that you are something here and that you can, you can change something, do something, prosper something, make healthy something. You can't. What we've got to do is get back to the light. What is the truth? Ah. Now we've taken our first step to 
witnessing that truth. What is the truth? I, the only I that I am, is spirit. The only life that character on the screen has is the life of the light. And the only activity he or she and the whole scene seems to have is the activity of the movie. The light it doesn't recognise that activity, does it? The light, if you asked the light, oh, did Brad Pitt walk from the left to the right and kiss her? Or did she walk from the left to right and kiss him? The light knows nothing of such activity or life or, or, um, or humanness. Only the film does. It's happening in and as the film. The spirit knows nothing of this body, this mind, this business, this relationship, this house, this car, this kitchen, this biscuit. Nothing. It's only our awareness. And you see, that's why you can pray to God all your life. He's not going to do anything. Oh, please God help my business. Or please God help my body, or my mind, or my world. But well, we know what kind of result that prayer has. Nothing. It's like praying to the principle of maths. Oh, please make two plus two six. Because my business is going bankrupt. Four is not enough. How is that going to help? It can't. So, the truth is what? I am I. I is spirit. I is the one light that knows nothing of all this, and yet is all this. I is the fullness of fulfilment, the fullness of life, the fullness of abundance, the fullness of love, the peace. In fully tangible, manifest existence already, it's the finished kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is all over this world. But men, meaning material consciousness, that's what men, the, when you see men, is simply material consciousness. That's all this manhood is. This, this manhood is not a gender thing, it, it's simply material consciousness. So men cannot see it. However, the illumined consciousness of a Buddha or a Jesus or a you and a me. There's no magic to this. There's no special dispensation of spirit called Jesus. He said it, I of my own self am nothing. Don't look at me, because you'll be witness to a lie. He said, these are his words, not mine. Do not look at me and think I'm something great, because you're lying to yourself. I am nothing. This sense of humanness am nothing. It is the Father within me. It is the Spirit that I am, the truth that I am, that you're seeing as what you call a miracle. And not only that, but you can do the things you've seen me do, and greater than these you can do. Now what more do we need to tell us that we are it, just as he was it, just as everything is it, everyone is it? It's beautiful. You, can you imagine that? This great spiritual light. These amazing miracles, seeming miracles of prosperity, of life. Even bringing back life where there was death, seemingly. Love and peace, joy. These amazing things. This light standing in front of you and me and saying, you can do these things. And not only that, you can do more. You can do greater than you've seen me do. Isn't that amazing? We are it. We are the miracle. We are heaven. What more do we need? All we need to do now is step into and as that. Drop this stupid, stupid insistence on being human. And holding everything and struggling with everything. Come on, we do not need it. And we do not need it beyond now. And the reason that it's that instantaneous is because of Buddha's realisation. And then 
all the great lights in the Bible. That's why I love the Bible so much. Because it's full of that same realisation. If you look at Isaiah, Elijah, Moses, John, Paul, Jesus, of course, they're all the light that understood there's nothing of this world that is anything but utter perfection. Simply let it be revealed by number one, knowing the truth. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. First of all, know the truth as we've discussed it. And second of all then, know the truth. So first of all, we've got lowercase k and t. Know the truth with the mind, as we've done, as Buddha did. Everything is perfect, but my perception is at fault. It's not even mine, it's collective perception. That's what's happening here, as this whole sense of good and bad. And then, then comes the act of grace. Then, we could say, let the truth be known as you, and that truth is your freedom. Know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Know the truth, let the truth then happen as you, and then you are free in and as that truth. Which simply means we're not latching on to the collective movie anymore. We still see the movie, but now we don't believe a grain of it, and we can just walk through the most terrible appearances, and yet the very glowingness of our consciousness heals it or, or reveals the harmony of it. I shared with the group, I think on, was it the last Friday call, I don't know, um, and it's the kind of thing you'd never share outside of a group like this, so make sure you understand it, I'll share it with you as well. But I go into a coffee shop every day and get cappuccino normally in the morning, in the evening, in the uh, afternoon, and the young people there, and I always stop and just have a chat with them, and one of the young people behind the bar just came over to me and said, it's impossible to be unhappy around you. Now, that is true, but the reason it's true is precisely because there's no Paul happening, as, or, or let's say there's very little Paul happening as this consciousness. Do you see that? So the consciousness that's here is the awareness of love. There's only love here. There's only joy here. And even people who know nothing about this, and I didn't talk to them, of course, about it, will pick it up. And it's true. Whilst they are, it's what you were asking, does it have to be you that lifts into, let's in this case, happiness, being truly happy and joyful? Or can it be, you know, can you rest on somebody else's consciousness all the time? The answer is, again, temporarily you can experience and will the lifting in, when you're sitting around illumined consciousness. But, of course, as soon as the illumined consciousness is gone, you walk into that coffee shop an hour's time and they'll be unhappy and grumpy again. But it's true, you see, it is impossible to be unhappy in this consciousness. Why? Because they are this consciousness happening when this consciousness is embodying them. Do you see that? As soon as this consciousness walks in, then whatever's here is this consciousness happening. I am your consciousness happening. And if you want proof of that, you take your consciousness away. And where am I? Where is this room? Where is everyone else? If your awareness is not here, where am I? I'm not here. It's literal. This table's not here. These biscuits, these, these, these fruits are not here. The only world you have is your consciousness happening as that world. Again, the whole of the universe is embodied in and as your consciousness. Because what is your consciousness? God. The whole of consciousness is this very consciousness. And you will see infinite variety, infinite individuality happening in what the human of us would say is our world. But it's not. It's our consciousness looking like our world, but it's most definitely only happening as you. Now, if someone has the slightest of openings, 
then they will be endowed, imbued and flooded by you, by your consciousness. So yes, they feel happiness. But that's the same. Consciousness can walk into a business and suddenly it prospers. Con- consciousness can walk into the environment of body and suddenly body is healed. But in a week's time, it can be back to square one if that consciousness isn't maintained. When you say maintained, are you saying that the... Thank you. When you say maintained, that consciousness is not maintained, you're saying that they are vigilant to not circulate the consciousness? Yeah, you have to... That's right. Yes, you... Each of us are our own universe. And that universe actually is is completely governed, completely, by this consciousness. Now be careful, it doesn't, in other words, I have complete and utter dominion in and as and of my universe. Complete and utter. But that does not mean the human of me does. The human of me can't go over there and say, get on your knees, give me 5,000, you know, that's not what I mean. Well, I, because this consciousness is God consciousness and therefore the whole of our universe as we give way as we relinquish the human sense becomes the government of God and now the only experience here is what God is love, life, capital L joy, capital J, harmony, abundance capital A, Can you see? All that's happening is it's now being revealed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you see how that changes completely this process. We literally are not having to change anything, we're just cleaning the windows. Alright, so we're going to go have some lunch now. Why don't we have an hour and a half but, really important now, start practicing it now, or even better, start being it now. Realising that what I am being as consciousness, which means, let's get this right down to the bottom line, it means, what am I thinking, minute by minute? What am I thinking? What is my consciousness entertaining here? So, over lunch now, let's just keep the awareness, as best you can, it doesn't have to be some big revelation, just as best you can, keeping consciousness that actually this world is heaven. It doesn't matter if I cannot see it yet. It doesn't matter at all, actually. Not at all. You will see it, but right now it doesn't matter. First thing is realise it. So you start actually realising this is illusion. Even the most beautiful person in the world ever walks past, he or she is illusion. The most beautiful gardens, the most beautiful news that we may see or hear, it's all illusion. What's actually there is paradise itself. What's actually is the body is paradise itself, the mind is paradise itself. But I've got collective consciousness running through here, but I've found it out and I'm not willing to latch on anymore. So you start separating yourself in this way, from collective consciousness. Just walk around for the next hour and a half, making sure you do not allow your mind to latch on to the world, or the memory to latch on to what's back home, as best you can. Just do the best you can. You won't succeed 100%, I'll tell you now, but it doesn't matter. It's that beginning to separate yourself from the, from the movie. All right? And the second thing is, as Doris Crawford always used to say, and Joel said too, and it's very, very beautiful, is keep your conversations between you in heaven. Do not talk about your problems. Do not do that. Every word of you talking about your problems is holding that problem right there, nice and firmly, as if cemented in with the strongest concrete man has made. So do not do it. Keep your conversations in heaven. Do not discuss amongst yourselves the oil spill, 
or Haiti, or the volcano, or the accident spot, or anything. Just cut it out, because as you do so, you are holding it in place. And until we realise that, we're not being serious enough. In other words, let's get there. The only way we can get there now, the only way we can really witness these beautiful fulfilments of our experience is to start right now and be practical. Bring it to our practicality every minute. Do you see? Because every minute we're not, we're holding it all in place. It's as simple as that. I can tell you from experience, if you spend one day, one solid day, not allowing one thought or one sentence to be entertained. They come, the, 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 the thoughts come, but if you stop them, catch them, turn them around, turn them spiritual, if you do that for one day, your whole situation will dissolve and turn around as fulfilment. Let's go have some lunch. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.